Hello everybody, Calamity here, doing better than last time. Today's video is going to be all about some changes that are coming to Star Rail in the 1.5 and the 1.6 updates they have planned. And a lot of these quality of life changes are things that I've been asking for in Genshin for years and years and years, and here's Star Rail getting them in less than a year. So I'm going to go over each one and we're going to talk about them a little bit, and you all can share your thoughts if you agree, disagree, um, in the comments below, but let's get started. So the first thing that they are adding is a new permanent game mode called Pure Fiction. This mode is basically a like a horde mode. Enemies will endlessly respawn and your goal is to just keep defeating them and obtain a high score. There's also going to be sort of like similar to the Memory of Chaos Blessing or the Spiral Abyss Blessing, whichever you want to call it, where you need to sort of play around a buff that's going to help optimize your score even higher. And just like Spiral Abyss or MOC in this game's case, you will get rewarded uh, for getting the certain thresholds of scores. Now this is something I've been wanting in Genshin for a long time. It doesn't have to be a mode exactly like this, but at least something more to do for endgame players because that's what spiral abyss is right that's our end game but spiral abyss floor 12 is something i can finish in i don't know like less than 10 minutes depending on the cycle that it's going through at the moment and then once you do that well that's kind of it i mean you can explore i guess but what if you're done with exploring what if you're done with story side quests and all that stuff do you what, what what am I supposed to do then? <laughs> so I've been wanting other sort of endgame challenges for uh, Genshin and it's really cool to see that Star Rail is going to get a little bit more variety and not just the Spiral Abyss equivalent which is Memory of Chaos. Next up, they are adding even more stages to Memory of Chaos in Star Rail. So they're adding stage 11 and 12. Um, but if you're not playing Star Rail, there's only 10. But in 1.6, there will be 12, bringing the total amount of jades you can earn from each entire Memory of Chaos cycle from uh, 600, I believe it is, to 720 stellar jades per phase, which is great. More rewards, and honestly, even though I barely was able to beat stage 10 myself, I am looking forward to to seeing what kind of challenges stage 11 and 12 will bring. Now, is this something that I want in Genshin? Not necessarily, like, do I want, like, a floor 13 or 14? No. I would love to see a reward increase for Genshin's Spiral Abyss because it's only gotten harder over the years. Ask any Genshin player what was in Spiral Abyss during the first few updates, and it was nothing but, like, the big hill of Churls, Ruin Guards, and stuff like that. There was barely... You know, like these days, there's like a bunch of different bosses with complex mechanics to them and all this other crazy stuff. But the rewards have stayed the same. I've always wanted Hoyoverse to increase the rewards that we get for doing Spiral Abyss. Either more Primo Gems or at least let us choose the artifacts that those strong boxes that we get from doing Spiral Abyss. Let us choose the artifact set that we get at least. Because you just get, I believe you just get the latest artifact set when you complete the Spiral Abyss. You don't get to choose. I think it would be better to choose and I think it would be better to get more uh, 5 star pieces over 4 star. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. I just kind of wish the rewards match the difficulty for Spiral as it's gotten harder over the years. Uh, next up is an auto clear function for Memory of Chaos. So if you've cleared pre the previous Memory of Chaos, when it resets or the new cycle start you will automatically start at um moc stage seven which is fantastic now this again something i have been asking for in genshin because i'm sure all of you have done spiral abyss no floor nine and ten are basically free and even when the spiral abyss changes the only thing that changes mostly is floor 11 and 12. Like 9 and 10 only change like once a year. So to me, whenever the spiral resets, I always feel like it's such a waste of time to have to do floor 9 again and then floor 10 again and then finally get into the, the new stuff at floor 11. So I would love if Genshin just made it so I could just start on floor 11. Next up is another feature that I wished was also in Genshin. And this is coming in 1.5. This is the ability to restart a challenge in Star Rail for Memory of Chaos 
and you don't have to repick your teams again. Also, you can also choose to just redo the second half. Now in Genshin, there has been so many times where like maybe you three star the first chamber on floor 12, then you three star the second chamber. Then maybe you weren't familiar with an enemy's mechanics on the third chamber and you're on the second half and you're like, oops, I kind of want to redo that second half because I messed up or whatever. In Genshin, well, you know, they're going to be like, well, too bad. It sucks. Redo the whole thing just to get that one last star on chamber three. And that's a pain. In Star Rail, they're letting you just retry from the second half if you want to. Or like when I do my guide, sometimes I just want to showcase a certain chamber and fight a certain boss, but not have to do the whole spiral abyss um, just to get to one part. And if you're talking about the card system for Genshin, those card buffs, like let's say I just want to redo chamber three, they could just give me multiple cards to make up for like me skipping one and two. Just give me three sets of card buffs to choose from, you know what I mean? Next up is yet another another quality of life change that I wish was in Genshin. So Memory of Chaos and the new game mode Pure Fiction, instead of being two weeks to clear them, you now have six weeks to clear one phase of Memory of Chaos or one phase of Pure Fiction. However, that doesn't mean that the, it's six weeks for new cycles in between. It's actually, it's still going to be the same. So we're still getting, um, it's going to alternate. So you get every two weeks, we're going to get a new Memory of Chaos. And then the next two weeks, Pure Fiction. And then the next two weeks after that, another Memory of Chaos. So you can see here in the picture in the graph here, by week five and six, there will actually be two Memory of Chaos cycles active at the same time. I think this is a fantastic change because a lot can happen in your account between, you know, six weeks. That's a lot of time. You can get more pulls. You can build a lot more characters in that time or maybe improve your existing characters in six weeks. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of time. And I love it. Now, for people that have played both Genshin and Star Rail, you realize that, they, that the blessings for Spiral Abyss or for Memory of Chaos, they're usually, like, tailored around whatever characters in the banner. Which I thought was like kind of cool at first because it's like, hey, it's, it's it's incentive to pull for the character and it shows you how useful they can be in endgame. The thing is, if you just pulled that character and then you have to build them up all the way from level 1 all the way up to like 80 or 90 for, you know, endgame stuff and get all the artifacts, there's no way you're doing that in two weeks unless you pay for extra um, resin or trailblaze energy or whatever. So giving yourself six weeks is fantastic to be able to build a brand new character and get them ready for endgame content. It's so, so good. And honestly, I wish, I even wish Genshin was like this. More time to complete the Spiral Abyss so you don't feel like you have to rush. So you can see on the bottom half, it's showing you the other, like it's going to keep going. So after the Memory of Chaos 2 comes out, then the next two weeks, it's the second Pure Fiction, then Memory of Chaos 2. So it's just, it's just showing you the, that alternates here. Look at this, more rewards from both Pure Fiction and the Forgotten Hall, uh, which is great. Again, this is what I was just saying earlier for Genshin's um, Spiral Abyss. It doesn't have to just simply be, give us more Primo Gems. This one's giving us uh, self-moduling resin, so I'll explain that for Genshin players. In Star Rail, there's something called a self-moduling resin, which allows you to craft a specific main stat on an artifact piece of your choosing or i guess in this game's case relic of your choosing which is the same thing so yeah let's say you're having trouble getting speed boots or a crit damage chess piece with the self modging resin you can use it and say like i want specifically to make a speed boots ma or main stat speed uh boot piece of this artifact uh set the subsets that you roll though are still randomized so keep that in mind but you know, sometimes it's just about getting the right main stat that can make a huge difference. Next up is Battle Pass improvements. So there's going to be even more tiers from... Uh, it goes up to level 50 all the way up to level 70. And you're just going to get more rewards uh, in doing so. All sorts of rewards. This is great. Uh, why can't Genshin get more rewards from its Battle Pass? It's been the same stuff since forever. But, you know, I guess the Battle Pass in Genshin's alright, but... I mean, I wouldn't complain about more stuff in the Battle Pass either. So, nice change there. And then you can see the reward adjustment plan, meaning they're going to 
make adjustments to the rewards as time goes on, and there's gonna be some more optimizations for it, which great, no no complaints. Next up is uh, feature relic optimization functions. This is gonna allow you to rapidly enhance relics levels. Again, something I would love in Genshin, because I'm sure y'all know when you level up a artifact piece in Genshin, you always have to click confirm, then you have to auto add the artifacts and confirm again. And it's kind of like, ugh, come on, come on, come on. This, I don't know what it, exactly what they have planned here, what it looks like, but it looks like it's going to be a lot faster to upgrade your relics to level 15. So, you know, that's always welcome. And they're also adding two things to relics. There's going to be a, now an automatic discard relic. So when you're farming your relics and you find one that has really bad substats or a poor main stat or whatever, you can put, you can mark it as a discard relic so that what you, you can automatically salvage all of these Basically, the trash relics pile will be automatically salvaged um, for you, so you don't have to go through your whole inventory. Just mark it as you farm it, which is nice. And then there's also going to be a better recommended relic function, so you don't always have to look up guides or, you know, Google, YouTube, or whatever for a character. Sometimes you just want a quick, uh, dirty, you know, recommendation just so you can get the character started and stuff like that. Now the last thing that they're adding is the ability to expand the number of um, characters that you can share. So in Star Rail you can share one character with your friends or you know random players out there can you borrow your character essentially when they're farming their calyxes. Um, you can now share multiple characters instead of only having to pick one which is great. It means more chances for your characters to get picked and more chances to get a little bit of extra money for doing so. And the second part here is that you can now pin your friend's support. So if you have a favorite friend out there whose unit you are using basically all the time, and for me it's my friend's blade, I use him all the time because so many uh, calyxes in this game have wind weaknesses so i always bring him and he does a lot of aoe damage and just a lot of damage in general really really strong character makes the runs go really really fast so having being able to pin him so i don't have to refresh the, the friends list if he doesn't show up for whatever reason is really really nice and overall i gotta say all of these changes that are coming to star rail are just really really nice i have zero complaints about any of these and like i said before like, more than half of these changes that I just read to you are things that I have been saying in the feedback for Genshin's little surveys, like, can you please improve the Spiral Abyss uh, uh, rewards? Can you please add more endgame content for other uh, players out there that, you know, that want a little something to do? Uh, can you make the, you know, just redoing Spiral Abyss a little bit more convenient for, you know, for us? So, like, skipping floors 9 and 10 and... Being able to do one specific chamber if I mess up, like things like that are just so, would be so nice to have in Genshin and here's Star Rail getting all of that and more. So it's really, really nice to see. I'm looking forward to the changes as a content creator. You know, that's just great for me. It means I get to possibly, you know, once they're, once MOC stage 11 and 12 is out, maybe I can make guides on those, make a guide for the pure fiction events if people are struggling on those. So. For me, I'm chilling. That's great news for me, but let me know what you guys think about these changes coming to Star Rail. Would you like to see the same things come to Genshin as well? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.